Hello and welcome to the NC Podcast. I'm your host, Justin McRoberts, and I'm also my very own guest. Uh, after years of interviews and digging into topics and important issues uh, and movements through the gateway uh, of other people's work and other people's conversations, um, we've decided to turn this podcast towards the sort of tr- more traditional like Q&A, Q&R format. Because the thing I was chasing even when I was doing interviews was trying to figure out what was pay attention to what was important for you, what would be most helpful for you, and then addressing that through, like, what are other people talking about you know, with regards to this, and how, how other people address these things. In the last few years, the most life-giving way I've, I've gone about trying to help you when I can is one of the most life-giving ways has been the Q&A, Q&R thing I've been doing at Instagram, and I realized this could be a nice little marriage of things, that I still do the, the Q&A, Q&R at Instagram, it's an ask me anything uh, about uh, about uh, art, uh, religion, uh, and leadership. And the conversations, the questions I get are, are, for me, really revealing. Like, oh, these are the things I actually want to be talking about and getting to talk to you directly about them. So let's dive into this week's uh, list of questions. Got a few really, really great ones that, uh, that moved me. Uh, the first one is how to find connection with God again in a different way after the untangling um great question and really hopeful question i actually like this question because what it what it means to me is is you've um you've not quit on the process that you you you're talking about connection with god in a different way after the untangling that it's not like there's something about god and the whole idea of god that like well we're sort of done with it you're recognizing that when you know, the, the gap has to do with like practices Oftentimes, I've said this in, in different settings, that in, in a good therapy session, um, when, you, you know, when you go to talk about a relationship with someone, they the, a good therapist will ask you about your experience of that person. And, and what that means is that the, the space between you and a person is oftentimes filled by like filters or, or experiences. Like there's, there's, there's something between me and this person. Sometimes it is the way I'm going about it. So I love, I love that the question comes from that place. Like I want to relate with God differently. Uh, so on, so specifically, I'd suggest one, get a spiritual director and or a coach, uh, for at least for a short season, or maybe even just a session to walk through some specifics. Normally, normally there's like a thing or two, um, that we, we want to stay away from. So in other words, for some folks, it's like church attendance. And that's a weird thing to say as someone like, I love a good church service. And I'm a big fan of the folks who, who, who uh, do the organized religion thing. At the same time, I know that for some folks, having to show up at a certain place at a certain time and listening to sermons, um, et cetera, that, that can, be, uh, can be a bit of a setback, that there's something there uh, for them that, that uh, triggers, is it against the word I should use? Uh, not just negative feelings, but like, but but bad mental patterns. <clears throat> maybe that's a thing to stay away from. Maybe not, or maybe there's certain kinds of prayer. But I would get to some specifics about that. What is it about the way you used to do this that you know doesn't work? And then take some time to not get around those things. Then um, it's not just about trying new things. It's actually about processing the new things after you've tried. Them. In other words. It's not unimportant, but it is less important what it is you try to do new. It is more important that you have a place and a way to process your experience of those new things on the other side. So one, good on you for continuing to pursue. Uh, like I want to connect with God. I know I need to do it differently. Let's identify what it was about the past and the way you were doing it that you know you shouldn't do for at least for a season anymore. And then as you decide on maybe some new practices and experimental things for you, the most important part of that new endeavor is going to be where and how you process those experiences uh, so that you can do some self-excavation and figure out how it goes. That's my two cents. Great question. Thank you. Um, how to get deep work done. This is, this is an art question. I get this uh, fairly often. How to get deep work done when running distracted that day? So um, I'm going to say a few things about distraction first. One um, sometimes we're distracted because there are lots of things going on 
um, and we're trying to attend to a lot of different things. Sometimes we're distracted because we're trying to get deep work done. And what resistance is doing is, uh, is, is just kind of handing us stuff. Like in other words, sometimes there really is like on this day, there's a bunch of different stuff going on. I've got to attend to all of it. The kids have this. My spouse has these things and the, this work thing came up and all this stuff really did show up on the calendar all at the same time. Sometimes we get into the day that we've chosen, the day we've set aside for for, uh, for deep work and suddenly we find ourselves distracted by things and that's internal. Either way, let me make this suggestion. The, the deep work for that day, depending on what you meant by it initially, the deep work for that day is actually just choosing a smaller goal uh, whatever that deep work thing is, the actual deep work is like choosing a smaller goal or a smaller bit of it and executing it uh, and then celebrating it. In other words, when I think about deep work, I've got some of that to do today. It's like expensive and it takes, I, I need like hour blocks, hours blocks to get in and get it done. And I will feel good about having done it if I get to the end of like a three or four hour session and I finish the project and I've edited it. Like I have it in my mind, this is what completion feels like. On a, on a day in which resistance is either distracting me or a bunch of other stuff has come up, it's more important. It, it becomes important for me to to ch uh, to chunk it. In other words, we talk about this with kids who live with ADHD. It's like this was the whole project. I want to get this all done. I'm going to just get this part done right now. And when I get this part done, I'm going to pause and high five myself and get a coffee and celebrate. To, and that becomes the deep work. This is the final piece of this. It's never about the specific day. It's never about the specific project. It's never about the specific distractions. It's about the pattern. And on those days, if I can put in the time and the energy to reorient my goals and do some deep work regardless of distraction, I start to retrain my soul. And that's actually the ballgame. It's to not reorganize our lives around our distraction, but to figure out how do I live in distraction, pick small goals, and use that day as a training ground. You're training for the next session, which will be training for the next session. And it's about the, form uh, the formation of your soul and the resilience in your, in your soul when it comes to getting work done with regards to distraction, uh, regardless of distraction. So pick a small goal uh, and, and execute it and then celebrate it. Not because that goal matters, but because the pattern you're developing in your heart, your soul, and your mind, your body when it comes to distraction over the course of years, that's going to be the thing that pays off. Um, a couple questions from uh, from last week that I, I did not get to you. Um, one, when do you know uh, that it's time for a new chapter in your life? Um, on the one hand, I, I want to say that this is that when it's time for a new chapter. Um, some it, it sometimes it's just time for a new chapter. Uh, I think it's rare. In other words, sometimes all the signs are pointing to newness. Sometimes that's what's going on. Like the season has spoken. Uh, God has spoken. The, the, it, there is something external to you that is saying, hey, this has come to an end. Let's move on. Sometimes it is that. Very rarely. Most of the time, that sense of change is coming from here. And that change, and specifically change in a season, is a matter of will. It's a matter of what you're wanting to do. So how do you know? One... Uh, you normally, you like, you can't keep your mind off. Like it keeps coming up for you. And again, I would pay attention to the specifics. Like what is it that you're wanting? It's probably not because the, your externals are speaking that into your life. It's probably because something about your externals is, is, I don't want to use the word trigger, trigger again, um, is stirring for you wants and desires that are in you and you keep thinking about it. So that's one of the ways, you know, a change is perpetually moving through uh, our lives and sometimes we catch the wave. In other words, here's the other part. So sometimes, <clears throat> yes, life has said like it's time for change. Most of the time it's, it's that in our guts we're like, I think I want to change. So pay attention to it as a matter of will and desire rather than just your circumstances. But also pay attention to this. Oh, pay attention to this. Also note this. You are constantly changing. Like your life is probably evolving over the course of, over the course of weeks and days, months, definitely years by like small percentages. On occasion, we kind of catch the wave. In other words, we're being moved and changed all the time. So that season for change, you're kind of always in it. When you have, when it's different is when we're either like more aware of that or we're more wanting of that. The last piece is this. 
Um, our indicators are usually some combination of frustration and passion. Frustration with what is or was and passion for what might be. The more specific we can be, specifically about what we're wanting to move to, um, the, the, the better this whole process is. So when you know it's time for a change is when you can, I would say this, is when you know specifically what it is you want to be doing or specifically where it is you want to be going. If you can name the thing over there that you want to move towards or name the thing in here that you're trying to go get, if you can name it, then like that's how you know it's time to go. But if it's just this general sense of like, I think it's time for a change, that could mean all kinds of other things that I would I would suggest you work with a coach to identify. Um, I'm going to wrap it up with this one. Um, how do you balance contending for a point? This is about argument. Uh, how do you balance contend- contending for a point with someone close to you versus when to let them have their point of view? Um, this, ki- this has been coming up a bunch um, for a man the last 12 or 15 years. Um this, I'll read you the answer I, I gave on, on Instagram, and it says this. This could be hard, and here are some things to consider. There isn't an issue or an idea on the planet more important than the people who hold them. We'll come back to that. Secondly, losing a friend is always worse and harder than losing an argument. It's tied to the first one, obviously. And then this last piece. We fight about too many things because we don't pare down our internal menu to the things we are actually caring about, the things we can actually care about. Most things aren't worth fighting for. Pick one hill to die on if you have to. Beyond that, you're probably just being foolish. So um, I posted something to to this effect recently and and I got a little bit of pushback, which is totally fine. That's some some of why I do what I do. That there isn't an idea or an issue on the planet more important than the people who hold those ideas. If there is value in an idea, it is because it has a positive – whatever value there is in the world of ideas is is proven in the lives of persons. It's always about person, which is to say everything's personal. Everything is personal. So if it's not moving lives in a positive way, if it's not changing lives in a positive way, then I don't really care about the idea. We have been entranced by – because so much of our interactions with one another – happen on a screen about this size uh, or or this size. Um, we have we've been suckered and lured into the into I guess the idea uh, to this sort of we believe somehow we act like we believe that ideas uh, matter more than people and that people are their ideas. In other words, when you interact with me on the screen, part of what's actually going on is like I'm not actually a fully real human being. I'm delivering content. Uh, that makes your your interaction with me predicated on our ideas. This is one of the limitations of uh, of online relationships. Is it's in the world in the realm of ideas, and it forces questions like this. I'm just going to say the scandalous thing, which is that idea is meaningless, and I don't really care what it is. And your cause is meaningless, and I don't really care what it is. The only thing that grants meaning and value to ideas and their causes uh, is human lives. Which is to say, if I do not primarily value human lives over and above ideas, then I'm going to make an idol of ideas and I'm going to step on human beings on the way to achieving or executing or worshiping or building my life around that idea. It is a sacrifice that we make of these deep internal feelings we have about this idea, this feeling, this thought, this philosophy. We are very attached to some of our ideas. And it is a legitimate sacrifice to say that I'm going to lose an argument about something I actually care about uh, for the sake of maintaining and enriching this relationship. (laughs) Doing that in practice over time can break us of the spell that ideas are more important than people so that we can move back into interpersonal relationship and then reapproach these ideas uh, where they are rightly contextualized uh, in relationship. Right now, societally, ideas take precedence over human beings, almost, uh, almost across the board. It's time, I would suggest on a broad cultural scale, that we lose far more arguments and gain far more friends. And if we can do that over time, the ideas we find valuable, the ideas we find value in and find valuable, will find the right context 
and community and relationship and an human connection. And until that time, we're going to continue to shoot ourselves in the foot. We're going to continue to cause division. We're going to continue to hurt people we could otherwise live with. Um, that's why I love this question. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Atsy Podcast. Uh, like I said, I'm your host, Justin with Roberts. Every week, uh, usually Tuesday, I post questions at Instagram. Feel free to jump over there and uh, and light me up with a, some questions about art uh, or religion or leadership, and uh, I'll answer them then. And then a few of them will make this podcast. Hope this is, continues to be helpful.